What's going on you guys? It's Scott from Fly Rides. I am in the shop today and have a very special interview lined up for you. We've got Buck from the Specialized R&D team, specifically their Turbo, Levo, and Kinevo, anything EMTB. This is one of the guys behind it. Buck, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, good definitely. Here. Oh, good, good. We're glad to have you. We are obsessed with these bikes, man. I don't know. I was I was kind of like slow playing a little bit. Just, uh, you know, I want to dip my toes in like a good first date. I just wanted to take it easy, man. <laughs> but now that you're here and I've got you in the interview, these bikes are so dope, dude. Like, they're so, so cool. We love them. I think I mentioned everybody at mm -hmm. the shop seems to have one if they own an EMTB. So, well done, first of all. Cool, thanks. Absolutely, yeah, I, man. I'd love to take credit for myself, but uh, <laughs> it's a big team. Awesome. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, it's such the you know a refined and dialed in line. I think is the most one of the most impressive things about it. And you guys always seem to kind of stay on top of the market, like set the conversation is another thing I'm always impressed by. But how long are you guys spending like from conception to, you know, releasing it to the public? How long are these things in development? Uh, it kind of depends on the project. Um, it, you know, more features requires more time is a general rule of thumb. Um, if it's a system like, um, like when we did the carbon Levo, the first gen carbon Levo, mm -hmm. that was a short development time, a couple of years because the system already existed and we we're just designing a frame around it. But then Gen 2 Levo was closer to three plus years or so by the time we got it to market because we're do doing a motor and a battery and all the communication and then the whole new chassis with it. So a lot to do. Wow, yeah. Is there a lot of like, kind of like, I don't know how you would even say, but like drafts along the way that you guys are going out to ride that'll never see the light of day? Oh yeah, yeah, no, there's, um, especially in kind of the research phase before we, we commit to a design, um, with whether that's the e-system like uh, a motor tune or even like things like kinematics like the traditional stuff we do for mm -hmm. mountain bike development and that, that, that uh, all applies for the e-bikes as well so yeah there's a number of what we call mules that are made uh, beforehand and that mule may be made to test a geo mm -hmm. or test a certain kinematic or test the way uh, motor rides. Um, so yeah, there's there's tons of fabrication that happens between our lab in Morgan Hill and some of the stuff done in Asia as well. Wow, cool, okay. Well, so you mentioned uh, like it's the same kind of process with your acoustic bikes uh, that it is with your EMTBs. Um, is there a lot of like kind of sharing of knowledge and like it was a Leva line, like what's, I guess what's like the heavy, like the closest line that you can relate it to in the acoustic bikes? And did you guys pull a lot from that line to kind of design the Levo? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, this is a perfect example of, of uh, drafting off stump jumper in mm -hmm. a lot of aspects. So the, the bikes launched, I don't know, what was it, six months apart from, maybe it was a little bit longer. But yeah, we, we um, chose the chassis direction for stump jumper and then kind of took that and we're using that kind of same <laughs> sidearm design for the Levo as well. Um, and so a lot of the same kinematic R&D that came out of Stumpy, we applied to, uh, to Levo, but then you have to adjust too, cause you've got that motor packaging mm -hmm. and you've got uh, a little bit different requirements here and there. So you, you, you take, take what you know and you adapt it to mm -hmm. that too. So a lot of the learnings that come from kinematics and chassis design in Morgan Hill go straight into the e-bikes and then this, the team in Switzerland, they're the experts and do all the development for the batteries, speed sensor, displays, motors, all that stuff too. Very cool. Yeah, I love that the, and you, you guys are taking an acoustic mindset and just, you know, kind of adjusting it slightly and putting it into these EMTVs. I think that's really, really interesting. For most of the development team, are they all from like a mountain biking background in an acoustic sense or should some of them come in because they're passionate about e-bikes? Like where's that, where did that marriage kind of start? uh for for most people um it's i would say most of the people came from acoustic bike mountain bike background um on the team for sure um the the team in switzerland by, led by jan talabasic um he they started that years ago when we were developing the original turbos and um but jan had been uh designing mountain bikes for us i think starting in 2005 in morgan hill okay and then uh gradually went to e-bikes but um yeah, for the rest of us, we weren't doing e-mountain bikes and, uh, you know, saw the market growing in Europe, not so much in America back mm -hmm. in that time. But um, we said, okay, well, we need to get after it. Let's take a look at it. We bought a, a handful of competitors' bikes and went out riding. There was like five of us, Brandon Sloan, Marco, um, Sondreger, and Jan and myself. And it was, it was pretty eye-opening. Like, we were like, eh, e-mountain bikes, you know. 
but after riding them, it's like, okay, there's there's something here. It's pretty yeah, yeah. it's pretty freaking fun. The bikes at the time were not kludgy, but they left a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, uh, just small things that, that distracted from the ride. So it was easy for us at that point to sit down and go, okay, there's some low hanging fruit here. Let's see what we would want to improve. And that's kind of how the whole first Levo project started. Cool. So yeah, it did a lot of a lot of um, passion about mountain biking before we we ever got into e-bikes. That's great. I think it really reflects in the final product. What uh, what's like the most exciting uh, kind of bump or kind of uh, development you've seen in the e-bike industry or the EMTB industry specifically, since that's where you're focused? I don't know. In some ways, it's kind of tuning our own horn. But the the Korea that just came out, mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting because it kind of opens up a new possibility of a of lightweight lower power bikes mm -hmm. um, especially for maybe riders that we haven't reached yet with e-bikes that um, have a pretty good level of fitness already and and um, feel, feel like they're held back from from um, heavy traditional style e-bikes yeah so yeah. so i think that's that's kind of maybe the next frontier um, for EMTBs as well, you think? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Cool. You know, All see right. where it goes. Yeah. I think there's a little twinkle in Buck's eye there. <laughs> <laughs> so we could be seeing something like that. Who knows? No, I think there's, all, I mean, when we posted our video on it, there was already talk. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see this on an EMTB. So I, I, a lot of the talk you hear, especially at these cycling conventions, I just got back from Eurobike a mm -hmm. couple months ago. And, um, you know, you saw stuff like Interbike kind of going by the wayside. And I think a lot of the reason is people kind of see the cycling industry there's sometimes like a lack of ingenuity from some companies and stuff how do you guys kind of stay ahead of that because i feel like you guys do a great mm. job of making sure that you don't fall behind and you're not just like following the pack what do you guys i mean how, how do you do that uh well i guess to be fair we don't always stay ahead of everybody <laughs> we, we're definitely not the leader all the time um but uh, i think part of what helps us is that we're cyclists first right there's a lot of passionate cyclists that work as specialized so it, it um, w when you come to the table to fill out a project charter, you already have a lot of background of like how something should perform, or you you've been riding bikes and we ride bikes together at work and kind of toss around, oh this would be cool, or maybe this would be cool, and try stuff in spare time. And so you kind of have this uh, idea of, of where the product should go, kind of in the back mm -hmm. of your head, without having to sit down and learn. You know, like if I was to go to Apple and start working on iPhones, I wouldn't know where to start For even sure. right so <laughs> that just makes it easier that you're you're kind of already living that lifestyle when you go to design product so what uh what, what what are you riding right now what are you on emtb wise or acoustic wise what are you on at the moment uh, to be honest, I don't really ride acoustic bikes much, okay. you know, here and there for testing purposes, mm -hmm. just to, if we're going to, like I said earlier, we're going to test something, sometimes easier to, to bolt it onto one of those bikes, but 95% of my riding is on e-bikes now, so Levo, um, I've put a little time on Creo, um, Kinevo when we were developing that. Um, yeah, we're, we're, so where are you riding mostly? Just by, back home? Or are you going anywhere? What's your what's your dream uh, mountain bike trip, for instance? Oh man, uh, we've done, done a number of trips over the years. Uh, uh, anything in, in BC is awesome, of course. Okay. But uh, one I haven't made yet is Madeira, um, off the coast of Morocco there. And uh, just, you know, uh, pictures from there look insane. You never know until you go, but yeah, the yeah. pictures look insane there. The shots from the EWS last year looked Super cool, and it's there's ocean, great views, and mm -hmm. I think it'd be insane to go there for for a vacation. Yeah, definitely. But so, what, where do you kind of see that in that part of the industry going, especially with like competitions and stuff like mm -hmm. that? Um, you've seen more and more of them popping up. Mm -hmm. um, where, yeah, where do you think kind of the e-bike industry is headed in that in that aspect? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a tough question because yeah, I struggle yeah. with it a bit. I, 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 my personal feeling, and I hope it doesn't upset anybody, but I feel like we, the industry, um, has kind of stayed in its comfort zone you know try to make e-bikes race just like regular mountain bikes mm -hmm. but they're a totally different uh product when it comes to racing you know like they weren't today's product wasn't built around racing like um s works epic what is yeah, yeah. right or or a demo downhill bike or anything so i don't i i, I feel like uh some promoter is going to figure it out to to figure out some kind of format that's going to be a lot better uh than than what we have today I, the races that i've been to that are e-bike uh, have e-bike categories are kind of like a add-on to a yeah, traditional bike race yeah. and a, a lot of the early adopters for e-mountain bikes got them because they they wanted the extra help getting out on, back on, on the trails and everything mm -hmm. so that the last thing they want to go do is suffer for two hours straight <laughs> right sure, yeah, so yeah. there'll probably be a different format and especially as as the next few years of de development in e-bikes mm -hmm. comes it'll be a 
a totally different product than what it is today. So there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of different stuff getting tried. Um, but yeah, something that that probably involves a bit of range strategy mm -hmm. and uh, power usage and stuff like that will will uh, will be probably key in in what that what it becomes. That's what I mean. That's really what I'm hoping to see too. Because yeah, right right now it's like I mean I've done a couple of the boogaloo's and stuff, but like. Yeah, you're just putting it in turbo and just like cranking out as quick as yeah. you can, which takes a certain amount of skill, especially mm -hmm. like going uphill and like that's all, that's a whole new side of things. But you're right. I think like at the moment, it's e-bikes are a separate thing. So why are EMTBs? Why would it be the exact same race that it is for everything else? Yeah, exactly. I think like, yeah, that, that's where we all just really start to see is like the added battery strategies and stuff like that is going to be more interesting. So uh, promoters start developing some stuff. <laughs> Impress us, please. Somebody will get it right. <laughs> well, Buck, thanks for joining us today, man. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. I will do my best to get any uh, answers to any questions you guys might have. Um, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. See ya.